What's up, you guys? Steven here for Off Shelf Movie Night to talk to you about physical media, about Blu-rays, 4Ks, and DVDs, the way we like to own our movies and TV shows. Today, I am going to own my own ridiculousness as a collector because I spent $25 more than I had to for this particular pickup I have right now. Let me try and do this without revealing any addresses or anything. Got this package here. This is an international package. Trying not to show... Ugh anything but i'm screwing it up this has so many labels on it um let's just open it up and get it over with shall we um if you uh like this kind of stuff if you're a movie collector you are want to be a movie collector then you're in the right spot let's talk about it all right opening this baby up i've been very excited for this for quite a while this is a, a pretty divisive movie though and here we have it it is dario argento's phenomenon let me just show you the back there so you can get a load of the extras and what this movie is if you don't know so this movie actually is interesting because this is their latest uh 4k restoration of dario argento film now they established a partnership with synapse films another really great boutique company if you've not ordered anything from synapse i i do recommend it um, they established this partnership with Synapse in order to do a domestic release. So Synapse Films has this movie domestically. And when I saw that I was highly conflicted for a while, this continues their half, like not even half, like little wrap around thing there for the, uh, the label. Um, so anyway, I'm losing my train of thought here because I'm just so, so excited for this. So anyway, Synapse putting it out, great company. I love their releases. They do great restorations too. So I had to decide what to do. And the reason this is a 4K release, so it's international. And you and you may be questioning me, why why did you have to decide what to do? It's available domestically. It's forty dollars from Synapse Films. So why did you just spend sixty five dollars with shipping to get this imported? So let me show you. Okay, so previously I have bought. These beautiful Dario Gento film releases from Aero Video. I love them. There's um, The Bird with the Crystal Plumage, Cat and Nine Tails, and Deep Red. And they all, they are beautiful. On the shelf together, beautiful packaging, wonderful restor 4K restorations. I love them. So Synapse is putting out a beautiful package, but it's not consistent with those three. That shouldn't matter because the movie comes first. The movie does come first. I know I it does. But if I have the option to maintain the aesthetic that is on my shelf with a beautiful release and I can possibly afford it, then that's what I will do. So yes, I spent 25 extra dollars for the same restoration. Let me take this label off carefully because I've had a bad issue with this before uh, tearing the case um yeah, literally the same restoration as far as i know same bonus features now i don't know if um synapse has the same book or not or if it's a different book or whatever but just look at this i love this artwork i love these cases i love the boxes that uh, aero video does so, so yeah, I wanted to continue the trend. I wanted my, as long as Aero Video is going to continue putting out wonderful Dario Argento films, I wanted their release. So, yes, I spent extra money. So, let's dig into this and see what we got. So, first up, we have a beautiful, once again, Perfect Bound book. So, something I learned recently, I you know, if you haven't seen this movie... You know, these books, nothing on the back there, that's okay, that's pretty common, continues the artwork. If you haven't seen, pff, seen, if you haven't seen the movie you've just bought, be careful with these books, because this happened to me with Lamb, where uh, watching an unboxing, an image was revealed that spoiled the movie. So I'm just going to show you, this is a good one right here on the inside, so you get a feel for what it looks like. 
But you got to be careful flipping through these books. When you get one of these things, if you haven't yet seen the movie, my advice is watch the movie before you open the book. This is a epic book, another epic Arrow video book with a ton of great stuff in it that I'm looking forward to reading through as I watch this movie. We also have the traditional, this is at the Arrow sort of method of operation at this point. We get the Perfect Bound book and then we get a poster. And this poster, I believe, will have, yes, let me just scoot back so you can see. And the original artwork. So, I never hang these posters. Do you guys hang any of them? I don't know. I, I, I only have limited wall space to begin with, and I really just like keeping these sets together. So the poster is, I don't know, kind of useless if I'm completely honest. And then we have the 4K. I hate these black boxes for these boutique releases. I wish they were still doing um, clear boxes. So on the inside... Just because if you order this, you bring this in, just because it is, you know, obviously has the rating for the UK there, this is a 4K, it will play in your 4K player. Now, the included Blu-ray will not. It will not. I have a Blu-ray, uh, international Blu-ray player, so it's not an issue for me. So on the inside, we do have um, a piece of advertising there, and I usually just leave those in the box. And we have some cards they all have the artwork on the back, and then they're... Uh, okay, let me just flip through them for you. These are kind of cool because this is from the era when they did do, you know, uh, poster flats and art cards and stuff in theater. Um, so, yeah, cool. These are cool. I like to I like to kind of have these to flip through too when I'm watching um, one of these uh, Arrow releases. So also, let me just take a peek on the inside. Sure enough, we do have alternative artwork. It is there. And I'm gonna flip to that right now. So this movie was also released I keep looking away from the mic. I know it's going to sound like crap later. Sorry. This movie was also released under the name Creepers, which is stupid, and I hate it, and it's just a whatever thing. This is what happens. Um, this is a divisive Argento movie. This is from 1985. I like this movie, but if you don't like it, I understand you. I get you, you know? And if this movie were made now, I would have all sorts of issues with it. But I tend to look at um, some of these movies uh, based on the era in which they were made. And also where they're from, because filmmaking is just different in other places. And this this definitely is an Italian horror film. This is definitely an Italian, like an Argento horror film. So things that normally really bother me in modern film, because you know better at this point. We've done better. Are, are like exposition explainer scenes that just explain the movie. There are some of those in this film. Um, there's the reversed artwork. Um, but, I mean, this movie was made in the early 80s, an Italian film. And interestingly, this movie also was shot in English and then dubbed in Italian, which will explain some of the acting because there, you know, Daria Nicoletti is in this film, uh, you know. It's an Argento film, so of course she is. So some of the acting is a little wooden, and that is due to some actors not speaking, being able to speak English. This movie stars Donald Pleasance and Jennifer, a young 15-year-old Jennifer Connelly, uh, two actors that do actually speak English, and they are a lot of fun, both of them, in this movie. It's about a young girl who has a, the sort of paranormal ability to, uh, to, to communicate with insects, and... She ends up in a sort of private, well, not sort of, it is a private school, and in that, in and around that private school, there are murders happening, and her ability to communicate with these insects ends up being of benefit to solving the crime, and of course, gets her, you know, involved with the murderer. And, you know, this is an, Ar an Argento thing where he read somewhere about how insects are used in murder investigations, and he also read about um, a medical condition that also plays a part in this movie, and these are real things, and it just, 
you know, the wheels just started turning for a film idea. And what I love about this film is it's a culmination of things that he's done so far because this brings the supernatural elements of Suspiria together with the giallo elements of Deep Red. And uh, it's all shot in beautiful cinemascope and it's bathed in blue, which is an Argento thing. It's not necessarily always blue, but he loves to just randomly bathe shots in beautiful color. And it's just so much fun to look at it, you know, as an Argento fan in 1985, this sort of culmination of everything he had done. Plus, it has a lot of impact uh, on it of American horror cinema, and that's probably the more negative pieces, to be honest with you. Um, it still has a great Goblin soundtrack mixed with, uh, I think it's Iron Maiden has a song in this, and, and that reminds me kind of of, of a Bava move, especially like... Uh, uh, a Lombardo or a Mario Bava actually move to bring in you know some metal uh, music in into the film. So it, the movie has issues, okay, it does. But what it does well is the visual, and you know it's not Argento's goriest film, but there's some great kills in this movie. It's just a lot of fun. It's you know when it gets to its most ridiculous. The actors are playing it straight, and it just ends up being so much so enjoyable. And it has a batshit crazy ending, which is just a blast. I mean, this thing has a chimpanzee as a main character in it. So I don't know if that tells you anything. Yeah, it's ridiculous. So if you don't like the movie, I get you. But I love it. I love it for what it is. I love it for uh, the film history of it, of seeing uh, Argento's previous films come together in something. I love seeing Jennifer Connelly in it in her early career. Donald Pleasance in the, you know, sort of middle to end of his career. It's it's a fun, fun movie. It's ridiculous. Yes, it, it is not one of Argento's best films, but it's beautiful to look at, and it's just a hoot. The more ridiculous it gets, the more I love it. And I'm not watching it ironically, because I think I've said uh, lately uh, on here that I don't appreciate watching movies ironically very often. That does, is not a thing that I really like. So yeah, literally the collector in me forced me to buy this version instead of getting the Snaps version. If you're not that guy and you don't have to have everything looking the same, I recommend the Synapse version. These guys make really great uh, products, but... But, okay, let me just do this. Look at this. But just look at it. Look at it. Look at it. Yes. I see that, and it was all worth it. Anyway, let me know if you're picking up Phenomenon. Are you bringing in the import version, or are you buying the Synapse version? What did you think of the movie? Have you never seen it before? If you haven't, you gotta watch it, man. You gotta watch it. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. It's out there. If you're an Argento fan, you'll, you'll see those moments. It's like, oh, Oh, this is this is him riffing on his own movie. This is him riffing on what he loved about Suspiria. And then there's another scene. This is multiple scenes where he's like, "Yes, he's really, you know, sort of taking everything that was giallo and putting it out there and, and showing why he's the master of it." And it, it's just a fun, fun movie. It, it's not a good movie it, it, per se. N- narratively, it has some real issues. It has these, you know. Um, heavy exposition moments to explain things and, and whatnot, but I just love it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let's talk about Phenomenon, and uh, again, tell me which version you're buying. Until next we meet, pull something cool off the shelf and share it with your friends and family. Remind them why physical media is the best way to watch films on TV. If you have not subscribed, please do so. Let's keep this conversation going. I'll see you guys on the next one.